What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today, super pumped to be bringing this video out to you guys. Not only are we going to be going over the top 50 positional rankings, but on top of that, we are going to be touching on some updates that we've made to the site, which are actually currently live now. As per usual though, we do want to be gauging your feedback. Our goal of course is to provide you guys with the information as easily digestible as possible, adding in information you feel is pertinent to the draft rankings so if you guys do have comments or suggestions certainly leave those in the comment section down below because we will be updating this throughout the offseason as we do each and every year and your opinions are very very valuable the goal of course is to provide you with as much pertinent information as possible to help prepare you for the draft but of course going overboard and providing too much information it could have a negative impact on the simplicity and efficiency of the draft rankings and of course we do have to make them mobile friendly with that being said, let's hop over to the website, which I will post on screen. But if you guys want to follow along on your phone or your PCs, we have a link for the website in the description box down below. One of the first things that you're going to notice is that we have added a few columns, color coordinated them. Starting from the left, we have the overall rankings, which are going to help you in the pre-draft process when understanding where around which range that players are going to be drafted from. But of course, we always highlight the importance of focusing more on your positional rankings because on draft day and in your mock drafts when you're deciding between player a and player b most often times you'll be deciding between two or three players at a certain position so being able to actually hone that list down remove the names of players at a position we're currently not considering it's going to be a vital tool because as we know we aren't really allotted a ton of time in between and during our draft selections fear not though guys if you are on the clock and you're deciding between multiple positions this is certainly an area you can utilize the next column the tier column where you can understand the projected value of each player across all of the different positions whether you're a quarterback wide receiver tight end or running back this column will help us establish the projected value of each player regardless of what position they actually play a couple last things to note before we do dive into the top 50 is that we have also added in projections as well as a video column the hopes and the goal is that for our upcoming draft package we are going to be utilizing video breakdowns on each player videos that aren't going to be available on youtube exclusive content for our website members with that being said though let's hop over to the top 50 players and there's no better place to start than discussing the overall volume of players at each position that are going to be drafted in that range as you can see, there are a combined 41 players in total that are either a wide receiver or a running back, virtually split down the middle, 22 running backs, 19 wide receivers. But what's most interesting about this volume breakdown is the amount of quarterbacks and tight ends that we have ranked within the first four rounds. Now, I understand nine total quarterbacks and tight ends combined. It doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but when we're comparing it to the volume typically drafted in this range throughout previous seasons, nine total is actually the highest we've seen in recent years. The reason these quarterbacks are inflating in value as well as the tight ends definitely comes down to the current landscape of the NFL. In 2020, there were 10 quarterbacks that actually had a passer rating above 100, 17 quarterbacks with a passer rating over 95. And to give you guys an example of exactly how crazy that is, quarterbacks like Tom Brady, Steve Young, Peyton Manning, Tony Romo, all solid passers themselves throughout their careers. Not one of them has a career passer rating over 100. For those of you who may not be fully aware, passer rating is a stat that takes into consideration completions, yards, and touchdowns against the total attempts. So quarterbacks right now and at this point in history are as efficient as ever at distributing the ball and converting those targets into fantasy points. In addition to the increased efficiency, we know this is becoming more and more a passing league. The amount of volume is increasing, which means the overall targets going to the wide receiver twos and threes, as well as tight ends in the offenses. Those numbers are also increasing, meaning the overall number of players we have that are fantasy relevant at the wide receiver position is also extending each and every year as well. As a result, the player pool is getting deeper. The fantasy points for starter level players is getting higher, meaning most of the teams and opponents 
competing in your fantasy leagues are going to be putting up more points overall. As a result, similarly to in smaller leagues, 10, 18 leagues, the value of the quarterbacks and tight ends, the difference makers at the position are going to be increased and inflated in value, which is exactly the situation we're seeing heading into 2020, which is why we have nine total quarterbacks and tight ends drafted inside the top 50. The top 50 is virtually all the players that are being drafted within the first four rounds, so many people in your league are going to be coming into the draft with a strategy to draft one of those top tier players at those positions much earlier this season than we're typically used to. At the top of the draft in the first two to three rounds, it's still very running back heavy even when compared to the wide receivers. Up on your screen, you will see a breakdown of the number of players being drafted inside the top 30. 18 running backs to just nine wide receivers, a ratio of two to one. Just one quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, two tight ends, Travis Kelsey, and George Kittle. Seeing 18 total running backs coming off the board in the top 30 picks, it does indicate that the first two rounds similarly to last season are going to be once again RB heavy, while rounds two through four are going to consist of much more wide receivers. Nick posted a pretty funny tweet when going through the initial wide receiver rankings. He had mentioned there are about 50 top 30 wide receivers, which is exactly a testament to just how deep the wide receiver position is. For all of those reasons, it should be no wonder as to why quarterbacks and tight ends, the value on those players are rising. Running backs, you're going to continue to see them come off the board very early in drafts. But now that we've kind of gone over all the updates to the website, a lot of the draft strategy conversations that we need to be having going into these rankings, let's actually take a moment to hop over to the top 12 players we have ranked for the 2021 season. Starting at the top, you'll notice five running backs coming off the board with the first five picks. We have Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, and Alvin Kamara in that order. When it comes to each of these five running backs, there's really a lot to love about each one of their situations. They all bring a certain level of upside and safety to the table each and every week. And while there could be some potential concerns with some of these players, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley recovering from significant injuries, Derrick Henry, not much of a pass catcher, and Alvin Kamara, certainly some quarterback question marks coming into the 2021 season. But while we could sit here and nitpick the potential downsides for each one of these running backs i think a strong case can also be made for why each one of them could perform as the number one overall running back in the league for the upcoming year so if you're a person that's coming into the draft with a really strong take on why you think this player should be drafted at the top of the board i really can't fault you we really love all the running backs that are being drafted inside the top five moving over to the first wide receiver off the board we have none other than Devonte adams one thing that i definitely have to point out is that if you take a look at the tier column, you'll notice Devontae Adams is the only non-running back that we have listed as a tier one player. Devontae Adams, as we know, is one of the true difference makers at the wide receiver position. This is, of course, with the assumption of Aaron Rodgers returning, but with the potential loss of Aaron Jones, even though AJ Dillon is a strong candidate to be a replacement, there is no better red zone duo in the league than Adams and Aaron Rodgers. The volume for Devontae Adams is the highest we've ever seen it, and quite frankly, frankly, Aaron Rodgers, the potential 2020 NFL MVP, is playing some of his best football we've ever seen. Moving past Adams though, and moving more towards the back of the first round, we have four more running backs, Nick Chubb, Ezekiel Elliott, Jonathan Taylor, and Aaron Jones. Each one of these running backs undeniably safe. Each running back undeniably has top five upside as well. The only thing I would say about two of these players is that Ezekiel Elliott and his fantasy value is going to heavily rely on the health of Dak. This ranking more optimistic in the health of Dak because we did see the potential downside we could see from Ezekiel Elliott if the Dallas Cowboys struggle at quarterback. I think a similar situation could be said about Jonathan Taylor. One of the major differences though when it comes to Jonathan Taylor's situation when compared to Zeke's situation is that at least the Indianapolis Colts, they're well coached, they have a strong defense, both factors that do assist a running back in having strong production. Having a defense that keeps you in games, not falling behind by two scores is going to keep the run game available in all four quarters. If the defense does provide them a lead going into the late game that'll ultimately result in more production more volume for a player like Jonathan Taylor now similarly to Dallas though we aren't 100% sure what's going to happen with the quarterback situation that should be solved in free agency possibly the draft but the point is both of these two running backs are going to be impacted by their quarterback situations moving forward the other two remaining players we have projected in the first round are both on the Kansas City team we have Travis Kelsey Tyree Kill both players we wish the 
best of luck in the upcoming Super Bowl. But whenever you have players that are attached to the best arm talent in the entire league, it's to no wonder why we have them ranked inside the top 12. Tyreek Hill has already had a season in which he has finished as the number one wide receiver in the entire league, a second season where he finished number two. And we've gushed on and on about how truly a difference maker Travis Kelsey is. And with the emphasis on the importance of drafting one of these difference makers at that position, I could certainly see Travis Kelsey moving up many people's draft boards. And there's even a possibility that George Kittle, the tight end we have ranked number two behind Travis Kelsey, he could certainly start creeping up into the second and possibly first round, depending on where people start to value him. Speaking of George Kittle, we're moving over to the second round. George Kittle, as you can see, we have him ranked 15th overall. Kittle's a player we've seen have very successful performances on the 49ers, regardless of the talent of the quarterback starting in his offense, a factor that certainly gives us peace of mind when drafting a player in the early rounds. One thing you'll also notice is that we have really strong tier two wide receivers, players like DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Stephon Diggs, players who undeniably help people reach championships in the 2020 season, but actually the few wide receivers in the entire league that have the ability to produce RB-like numbers. In recent seasons, when we compare the production from top five running backs over to top five wide receivers, the disparity in overall points scored does skew us more in the direction of the running backs. But each one of these five players in the tier two of the wide receivers, they're no strangers to putting up multiple 20 plus point games and are each attached to some of the best offenses in the entire league. One thing you'll also notice about these wide receivers is that these players are all ranked in the second tier. All the players that are being drafted after Stefan Diggs are ranked as tier three players and beyond. So even if you do head into the draft wanting to secure one or two running backs in the first two rounds, if we see a tier two player like Stefan Diggs on the board, even if going into the draft we wanted to draft a running back there at that spot, our decision still easy, stick with the tiers and go with Stefan Diggs. With that said, each one of these running backs remaining in the second round, each strong in their own rights. Starting with DeAndre Swift, he showed a lot of potential upside down the stretch even battling through adversity and injury by the end of the season and from his last six games that he played healthy this was a player who was averaging around four targets per game he was posting over 16 fantasy points in a ppr league and with the potential exit of receivers like kenny galladay and marvin jones to free agency that could even open up more opportunities for him in the passing game Behind him, Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers, they may not be the types of players to see the same amount of receiving work, but Josh Jacobs has a stranglehold on the rush attempts in this backfield, the clear option for this offense in the goal line. Cam Akers, he was also a player who was consistently posting double-digit fantasy points despite being in a committee, and down the stretch, his last four healthy games, Cam Akers was consistently seeing over 60% of the snaps in the backfield. As for Miles Sanders, this is a running back whose fantasy value is going to rely on some of the free agency and draft moves there are certainly a lot of question marks with the quarterback situation out in philadelphia i will say that regardless if carson wentz does return or not jalen hurts did show a lot of promise out there so miles sanders certainly could be a player who rises on the draft boards but i also wouldn't be surprised if some people avoid him as well outside of sanders though the only player on this list we haven't yet mentioned is of course patrick mahomes i really don't have to make too much of a case for you guys as to why we should rank him so high he's Patrick Mahomes the best talent at quarterback we have in the league with some of the best weapons in the entire league led by one of the best coaches in the entire league so with that being said let's just move over to the third round one thing you'll notice about the third round is that it completely consists of tier three players this means the running backs and wide receivers that are being drafted in this range have a similar overall value meaning depending on what position you drafted or focused on in the first two rounds you should have the flexibility to pivot in the third round and beyond while still avoiding giving up too much positional value while it would be silly to go super in depth with each player that's being drafted in this range i will say overall that a lot of the values for these players is going to be overall impacted by free agency and the nfl draft starting from the top antonio gibson who's going to be the quarterback for washington as for joe mixon he really struggled he's coming off of an injury his quarterback 
also suffered an ACL tear? Is this team going to be super competitive to start the season? An issue that definitely plagued Joe Mixon and caused him to post less than stellar production in the early part of the season. Allen Robinson, an impending free agent. We can't say with certainty where we're going to value him because we don't know which quarterback will be throwing him the ball, the competition for targets in that offense. But one thing that we can say with certainty is that he's one of the most talented individual wide receivers we have in the league. As for James Robinson, David Montgomery, and J.K. Dobbins, these are the final three running backs we actually have listed in the third tier. So if you were a person who drafted potentially a quarterback, a tight end, a wide receiver in the first two rounds, and maybe you don't have any running back drafted so far, if you do see a running back like J.K. Dobbins, Robinson, or Montgomery on the board, just know this may be your last opportunity to get a running back in this tier before there is quite a significant drop off. As a result of that tier break, you are going to notice we're starting to see a run at wide receiver. When your decision point is going to be choosing between a running back that has a significant amount of question marks, whether they're going to be a workhorse in their offense, whether they can be efficient with the touches that they get, when we compare those types of tier four players against receivers that we have listed in the tier three, really high end players like Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson, all players with undeniable top five upside at the position, the decision for us, it's definitely easy, which is exactly why we will utilize this stage in the draft to try to lock up one of those top receivers. You'll notice that by this point in the draft, there have been 19 running backs taken to just 10 wide receivers. And from this point on, you're going to start to see that correction take place. And moving forward, the distribution between each of the positions is more spread out evenly. That's not to say that each one of these wide receivers is a guaranteed thing. Michael Thomas, the quarterback situation, and his health, we aren't exactly sure where that's going to pan out to. Justin Jefferson heading into just his second year as a pro on an offense that hasn't consistently proven to have a significant amount of passing volume. Maybe that's a trend that they broke and will continue to break moving forward. But again, that does have to be brought into question. Kenny Galladay, we're not even sure which quarterback will be throwing him the ball either. And Chris Godwin, yes, he had his flashes of excellence, but the 2019 production that we were expecting, it's just really not a realistic expectation moving forward. With that being said, let's move over to the fourth round in the tier four players. But before we do, starting at the top, we have one final tier three player, a very important one. That's Darren Waller of the Las Vegas Raiders. Darren Waller's 2020 season was absolutely phenomenal for any tight end. While he didn't finish as the number one overall tight end in PPR leagues, he did finish second, compiling 146 targets, catching over 100 passes to post his second season with over 1,100 receiving yards. On top of that, he did show more chops when it came to red zone production. His previous career high for a single season was three receiving touchdowns. He tripled that this year, raising the bar, catching nine receptions through 16 games for 2020. Similarly to George Kittle, I could certainly see him as a player that people are targeting in the early rounds, so I could see him moving up on many people's draft boards, making him a player that if you want to guarantee is on your roster if you missed out on Kelsey or Kittle. In order to secure that and make sure that is a reality, you may possibly have to reach on him. One other thing you're noticing with the final players that we have ranked inside the top 50 is that there is going to be a significant run on quarterbacks. We're projecting one like we've never seen in recent history when it comes to fantasy football. Each one of these quarterbacks, we are projecting to give your team a significant advantage over your opponents who are not going to own one of these six quarterbacks. Another trend that you're noticing is that each one of these quarterbacks has a significant amount of rushing upside, a factor that we are beginning to see become more and more important when it comes to posting top five production at the quarterback position. One issue with sticking with the late round quarterback approach is while there is a plethora of options at that position, when we're talking about the production of quarterbacks outside of the top 10 when compared to these quarterbacks that are posting top five production we're starting to see the disparity in the gap in the top end level of production from this position become greater and greater when compared to the players outside the top 10 so that means if you are one of the people who drafts a quarterback in the middle to later rounds and that quarterback gets injured and you're forced to stream you're going to be coming in with a significant disadvantage and we cannot forget that the quarterback position when projecting it year over year is one of the easier positions to predict. 
when looking at the remaining three running backs that we have ranked inside the top 50 ceh chris carson Kenyon drake a lot of their value is going to come down to and rely on the moves that happen in free agency in the draft breaking down their individual situations really won't have much benefit at this point in the season but it should go without saying that each one of these running backs does have a significant opportunity to advance depending on how these moves shake out one thing i'll also mention is that there is a possibility that some rookie running backs sneak into this range and as for the remaining wide receivers terry mclaurin mike evans amari cooper adam Thielen, the remaining tier four wide receivers i'm gonna be upfront and honest i would not even feel too bad if i was starting the season with any one of those players as my wide receiver one being in a situation where the fourth round is where you're drafting your wide receiver one that does mean that you have had an advantage by taking either early running backs that provide possibly more safety or you secured yourself one of those top quarterbacks or tight ends to give you that positional advantage in that area you could couple that with one of these tier four players players that arguably still have top 12 upside but guys that's going to do it for this video we really hoped you enjoyed if you did how about hitting that like button if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button we thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one